Hey guys, how are you doing? Today I'm here in my basement because I want to check out my Faraday cage which I've built a couple of years ago and yeah, I basically have used an old ammo can which is made from solid metal and when I have built this um, Faraday cage I have used some aluminium foil which I have stuck into the rim here and before that I've taken out the plastic gasket, the rubber gasket and now this is sealing really good and also I've removed the paint around the edge of the container and now the aluminium foil is sealing of the Faraday cage 100% and before I close the lid I always put the ground of my house in between the aluminium and this thing here. So this is a grounded Faraday cage. It will protect your vital electronical gear. But today it's time that I want to make myself a bigger Faraday cage. Let's check out my new Faraday cage. Alrighty, so this is my new Faraday cage and you might ask, uh, this is a microwave? Yeah, exactly. So microwaves are Faraday cages and you can store a lot of electronics in here. So microwaves are pre-made Faraday cages and they have to be because the microwaves are not allowed to go out of the microwave otherwise they would not be allowed to be sold. But unfortunately that is only true for microwave wavelengths. So microwaves usually work on a wavelength of 2.45 gigahertz and the wavelength has about almost 5 inches so it doesn't fit through the holes here and that means that the microwave is a Faraday cage for exactly this frequency. Now the problem is that with EMPs you can have much higher frequencies with a shorter wavelength and then it might fit through the holes of the window here. So if you want to make a very effective Faraday cage you're well advised to close all of the holes here and solid Faraday cages are always better than the ones that have holes. Okay, so my old Faraday cage was didn't have any holes and therefore it was a really good Faraday cage. And here um, we have to turn this microwave into a good Faraday cage as well. Alright, so the first thing that I want to do is I want to take out the plug and stick some aluminium foil into it to close the hole. Okay, so I think that the easiest solution for covering the holes at the sides it's just to take some duct tape and I want to tape this aluminium sheeting to the side here. Alright, so I have covered all of the holes at the sides and I made sure that there are no holes showing into the microwave anymore. I covered this hole at the bottom as well. And now I have found this cardboard in my basement and it happens to fit the microwave perfectly so now I'm going to put this in here and this is where I want to lay my electronics into because the electronics actually should not touch the wall or the metal of the Faraday cage okay next I want to cover the window with aluminium foil Okay, so I decided to wrap the aluminium foil around the frame as well, so that in case there's a small gap at the door, that this fills in the gap. Yeah, and this should work as a proper seal now. Alright, um, there was one thing that I forgot to mention at the beginning. This microwave is half broken, so it doesn't work properly anymore and that's why we are not using it anymore in the kitchen. And this is why now I have this free microwave for my Faraday cage. And the next thing that I did was I was cutting off the prongs here because uh, I only want the plug to work for the connection to the ground of the house anymore. 
because then the microwave is grounded and that will make the Faraday cage even more effective. And yeah, you really want to cut off the prongs because if you put electronics inside and somebody turns on the microwave per accident, then you would fry all of your electronics at the inside. So make sure that the microwave is not working anymore. And one way to do that is to cut off the prongs. And the ground prongs are still working and that's why we are going to plug in the microwave right now. And now let's plug in the Faraday cage. Okay. And now the microwave should not work anymore. That's important. Yeah, it's not working anymore. All right, so I just searched for vital electronics in my house. And the first thing that I want to put into my Faraday cage is ham radios. And I made sure that they are fully charged. Okay. And these are working, as you can see. So ham radios are great if the cell tower breaks down. And with radios like this, you can communicate with your neighbors, with your friends, with anybody who is living in the vicinity. So these go right into here. I also have this charging device but it runs with the plug for the house. So I don't know if this is valuable because in an EMP event, um, it's very unlikely that the grid is working and that I can use the plug, but still I want to put the charging device into the Faraday cage. What else do we have? I have this emergency radio here, which runs with a hand crank. It's also a shortwave radio, so I can listen to the news even from very far away. It also comes with a flashlight. So pretty awesome radio. Okay, next, let's see. I have this phone, which is an emergency phone. So in case my mobile phone breaks, then I have another one here. It also comes with a flashlight. And I want to put my power bank, which is fully charged into the Faraday cage as well. And then of course, I'm going to add this charging adapter. So even if I can't use the grid anymore for plugging in my devices, I can at least recharge the phone with the power bank here. Next, I have this light here and it's pretty bright. It's an awesome camping light, it's pretty small. Runs with lithium ion battery. It has 1800 milliamps and it can also be charged with USB. Okay, then here I have a couple of charging devices for batteries, for smaller ones and bigger ones. But yeah, I don't know if these will get damaged in an EMP. And also, I cannot plug them into the power grid anyway if everything is destroyed. So I might as well just leave them outside my cage. I think what's more important is this um, solar panel here. It's a really good one. It has 20 watts. And I'm going to put this in my Faraday cage. So nothing is touching the wall here. And I'm pretty happy with my Faraday cage. It's pretty awesome. Maybe there's a better solution for the door, but hey, this is my hillybilly solution and it doesn't work too bad. Okay, so this is how you can protect your vital electronic gear from an EMP. And some people might ask, um, why should I do this? An EMP is very unlikely. Yeah, that's true. It's unlikely, but it can happen and it will happen. The only question is when. Will it happen tomorrow, in a year, in 10 years or in 100 years? And the answer is we don't know. We don't know when some kind of rogue nation uses a nuclear bomb or we don't know if an asteroid is going to explode in our atmosphere producing a very powerful EMP surge or we don't know if a sun flare or coronal mass ejection is going to explode into our direction. So there are many reasons, both man-made and natural, 
why an EMP can happen and this is how you can protect your vital gear against it. And if you don't have a broken microwave, you can take other containers as well. You can take, for example, an aluminium box like this one here. So this is a very good box for Faraday cages. The only thing that you have to do is you have to take out the seal here and put in some aluminium foil, for example. What also would work great is containers like these ones. So you can get these steel buckets for about $10 and they have quite a volume. The only thing that you have to do is you have to put some cardboard inside and press it against the walls so that your electronic equipment doesn't touch the metal wall. And then you take your lid, make sure that it seals 100%. So in this case you would have to take out the rubber seal which you can see right here and then you just close the container like that and then you have your Faraday cage it's pretty simple yeah but I really like this microwave Faraday cage because it's very easy to open and to access and this way when you want to get in and recharge your batteries again you don't have to fuss around with some kind of lid or opening system for example the ammo can here was really solid and a good Faraday cage but it was always a hassle to open and to connect to the ground of my house. So yeah. So I think I'm going to use this ammo can for something different now. Either a cache or maybe making a stove out of it. Alright guys, so this is it for the day. I really want to thank you for watching and stay tuned till next time.